Hey everybody! I'm so glad you joined us here on this beautiful Monday morning, morning, afternoon, um, for our Holy Week devotional. My name is Rebecca. I'm the worship director here at Christian Life Center, and I am so excited to get to bring the first devotional to you because I love Holy Week. I think it's such a gorgeous reminder of what our Savior did, and, and it's such a beautiful way that we get to interact with Jesus in his last days as he walked to Calvary, as he died on the cross, and that ultimately as he rose again for our sin on Easter morning. So this is a great honor for me, and I'm so excited to be here. So this week we're going to be going through different passages about Jesus's life and his death and his resurrection. But today we're going to be in John 12, 1 through 11. So I'll give you a second to get there if you are not there already, if you haven't read it already. <sighs> All right. John 12, 1. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Where a dinner was given in Jesus' honor, Martha served while Lazarus was among those who were reclining at the table with him. When Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, and she poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He didn't say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief, a keeper of the money, he used to help himself to whatever was put into it. Leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. Meanwhile, a large crowd of Jews found out that Jesus was there and came not only because of him, but also to see Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. So the chief priests made plans to kill Lazarus as well, for on account of him, many of the Jews were going over to Jesus and believing in him. I love this passage. I love this story. And most of all, I love Mary. I love the character of Mary. She's one of my favorite in the Bible. She is a fighter. She will not let anything stop her from engaging her, her Lord. She won't let anything stop her from worshiping her Lord. And as she, she comes and she pours this expensive perfume on Jesus's feet, she's criticized. She's criticized for her worship. And, and Judas says, why don't you give this money to the poor? Why are you wasting it on worshiping? And Jesus says, leave her alone. She's doing exactly the right thing. And I just love her tenacity. Her understanding that nothing was worth more than worshiping her Savior. And I, I can't help but think of Lazarus. This was Mary, who was with Lazarus' brother, sister. She understood firsthand what Jesus did. She lived every day with one of Jesus' miracles. And she was not going to let some criticism stop her from worshiping wholeheartedly. Because the reality is that Mary knew who she was worshiping and why. She lived daily with the reminder of Jesus' power. And I love this because Jesus was her family friend. He was someone she knew personally, but she also lived with the reminder that he was a savior. And it says later in the passage that more people came to believe in Jesus because of Lazarus, because he was raised from the dead. And I just love the picture of Mary coming to worship because she had seen what Jesus could do. And it brought me to mind that when we know who we're worshiping and why, it leads to extravagant worship, right? Because nothing that we give to God could ever amount to what he's already given to us. You know, God has given us life in him and purpose and grace and joy. And we worship as a response, as saying, I understand that you are good and I understand what you have done and I understand what you will do. And so when we see the power of Jesus, 
we can't help but worship, right? It is so much a part of us to worship something. Like Pastor Tyler said on Thursday, it is so much a part of us to worship something that when we know that Jesus is the life bringer, miracle worker, light in the darkness, way maker, that's plagiarism, don't tell on me. <laughs> but when we know these things, it, we can't help but worship, it pours out of us. And I love Mary for her extravagant worship and for her stick to itiveness. And I, I just want to encourage you guys, as we walk through this Holy Week, and it, granted, it looks nothing like one we've ever done before. We don't, you know, we don't get together and we don't, and that's, you know, but we get to be a part of worship. We get to be a part of God's redemption story. And we get to see ourselves as Mary. We get to see ourselves as Judas. We get to see ourselves in these stories. So I want to encourage you as we go through this week to, to make moves to see Jesus clearly. This Holy Week reading, these Holy Week readings are an excellent way to do that. We get to see Jesus as a person who lived and died and had relationships and we can see him more clearly through them. But I just pray for us as we go through this Holy Week <laughs> that we see Christ clearly, as clearly as we can. But, but what a gift that this is. And I pray that we all have Mary's stick to itiveness and bend towards extravagant worship. Because when you know who you're worshiping and why, it pours out of you. So guys, thank you so much for joining me. Um, thank you for sticking around with me and my plants. Um, I just pray that you guys stay safe and healthy and have an awesome Holy Week that draws you near Jesus. Okay, bye.